with my set of moves. He didn't call me the oracle. I'm about to make this historical. These questions you asking rhetorical. Like who do I be? You know, you know. I am the queen. I am the queen. I'm supreme. I'm supreme. You didn't know. What do you mean? Loki didn't call me the oracle. I'm about to make this historical. These questions you asking rhetorical. Like who do I be? You know. Good evening. Happy Saturday, you guys. This is your girl, the Philly Bruja, coming to you with a quick um, video on altars and setting them up. And I'm um, just some suggestions, suggestions, <laughs> suggestions, <laughs> suggestions. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for on a uh, setting up your altars um this is just like a kind of like a beginner's just a real quick guide because i'm sleepy i'll be going to sleep soon oh quick update uh i did um the back to school shopping today for one of my daughters and just to let all you occultists know yay all the halloween stuff is out I racked up on some things, so I was super excited about that. Just wanted to give y'all the update that, yep, Halloween stuff is out. Time to go ahead and um rack up on supplies and, you know, things of that nature, which made me think about, uh, why is this thinking, which made me think about, um, altars. Now, altars that I'm actually displaying in this video uh, none of those are my altars um, they're just general ideas when it comes to altars you can have several different altars but I think the one that gets the most um, questions I've been asked this a lot is uh, your ancestor altar how you do that is uh is very simple. It doesn't have to be you know huge and extravagant. It doesn't have to be like mine. If you ever, if I ever did show you, you know any of my um my subbies, my altar, uh, my ancestor altar behind the scenes, it doesn't have to be that big. You know, with all that other, with with the what do you call it? Like the the bells and whistles, and you don't have to go that big. You can do it with Simply writing your uh, ancestors, well, and, and this wouldn't be for, like, uh, people who recently transcended. It'll be people, usually you'll know. You'll just get a gut feeling on who should be on there and who, you know, who should be on there and who shouldn't be uh, on the altar. Now, with this, um, I also want to say I don't keep uh, any altars. In my room, not um, in my bedroom, not my ancestor altar, ritual altar, or um, my altar for my Arishas. None of that's in my room. Uh, I also don't show pictures of them often. So uh, just keep that in mind. I know sometimes you can't help it because, I don't know, maybe you have like limited space. So... I would just say be mindful if uh, you are working with um, deities or entities, multiple ones in the same space that um, wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't advise that because you, you have to do your research on what entities get along versus the ones that don't. And if you do something like that um uh, I'm trying to explain it in a simple term um you can't have a altar for this deity and then an altar for that deity in the same space because it could cause chaos energy and actually just kind of backfire on you so do your research when um 
assembling altars for ritual purposes, also altars for your um, religious deities or, you know, whomever you wish, whatever uh, deity or, you know, gods or goddesses that you, you wish to uh, do an altar for and give honor to. So just be mindful of that. So the first thing, ancestor altars. Again, I don't suggest any altars be in your room, in your your bedrooms. <sighs> um, with the ancestor altar, you can put down a white cloth. You know, obviously somewhere safe. You you could do the white cloth, uh, a glass of water. Um, also, I do white flowers, or right now I have um, bamboos on my altar. I have uh, the pictures of my ancestors who has transcended. Um, I have personal items of theirs that's on there. And for myself, I usually try to um, replenish it. I personally put um, water. I put coffee because actually all the ones that's on the altar, they all loved coffee. And I put rice on there because the majority of them on there like to feed people. You know, they cooked with love. So I put that on there along with some personal items of theirs just to show, you know, I remember them. I, I'm honoring them and I'm thinking of them. And uh, usually I light my incense around it. And I'll, I'll you're supposed to, I don't know what the, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm so sleepy, y'all. I don't know what the proper procedure is, but really, you know, you, you go from your heart when it comes to setting up your ancestor um, altar. Like, again, I said, you don't have to have a big one like mine's. Mine's is, you know, big enough. And all you need is a white, a white cup, I'm sorry, a white cloth, your cup of water. You, and if you don't have pictures of them, you can write their names down on um parchment paper that's pretty fancy I don't I wouldn't I, I personally just would get like a brown paper bag and you know write their names down and, and put that on the altar with um with a white candle now again like I said some people might have limited space and also I'm not going to sit here and advise you guys to do what I do which is um I'll leave my seven day candles some of them, some of them will go out about maybe four or five days. And then I just, you know, replenish my altar and I start it over. You know, it's just a habit. It's a ritual. It's a routine now. So um, you can always just do that. Sit it somewhere safe. Put your white candle on it. I like to have flowers on there or something living, you know, on there to show my respect. And, you know, just to give them honor and thanks and let them know I remember them. And I appreciate them for helping and looking out for me. Then that's your ancestor altar. Again, it doesn't have to be extravagant as, as the one I have or others have. It could be very simple. So that's what your ancestor altar. Now, um, with your ritual altars, you want to keep that um, separate from uh, the other altars in your space, in your house. Uh, again, this all depends on how much room you're working with. Uh, but with the ritual altars, <clears throat> you want to, um, if you're doing money man manifestation, uh, fertility rituals, anything. Shoot, even if you're reversing negative energy, you want to definitely keep that uh, apart from all the other places, um, sacrifices, offerings, you know, all the other things, as far as ritual purposes, you want to keep that in a separate place. I wouldn't suggest, um, posting pictures of that either, but again, you want to keep that separately. Um, the other altar that I get questions about a lot, especially when some of me come into my home, um, my altar for my Arishas. Now, I do have uh, 
a specific Orisha. Well, two, actually. And I have altars for them. So, but my point is, um, you have to do your research on, on that. If you want to give honor to, you know, a specific deity or entity. Um, just again, like I said, be mindful of not keeping them all so close together. And, and definitely not, preferably not in the area where you're supposed to be getting your sleep and your rest. Because you might not be getting sleep or rest, <laughs> you know, when when it's in your actual uh, bedroom and things like that. So you just be careful of that. Um, I see a lot of different videos and stuff um, out here where, you know, they're advising working with deities. Um, you got, uh, obviously, the most known is Oshun, uh, Yamaye, Oya, Shango, uh, Ogun, Obatala. You got a whole host of different deities um, where folks are telling people to just literally step up to the mic and do offerings and things of that nature um, to these uh, what's the word uh, deities um, and, and and you know things that it, I, I wouldn't suggest that whatsoever whatsoever. Um, because there is something that needs to take place before you even start that process. So uh, I would just say take that kind of information with a grain of salt. I've seen on uh, online and on videos um, people who are showing others how to set up altars to, to these deities. Um, and they don't talk about the dangers of doing that. <clears throat> so I, I wouldn't suggest that if you don't have any uh, experience in it and you don't know how to perform <laughs> to perform or um, open the, the, the door, so to speak. It's a whole nother. I can't get into that, but it's a whole nother process that take place. And for the folks who are out there just straight saying, OK, well, you want to um, you want to get pregnant you want to um sorry you guys I got distracted you um you want to get pregnant or you want this or this that and the other uh hey go ahead and you know do do a, a altar for this one that one you know and they tell you all the stuff to put on there most of them is uh is right as far as what we do place on the altars, but no one ever seems to talk about what you have to do before you even start that altar up. And, um, I don't think that that's very responsible because you're, in a way, inviting, not so necessarily, I'm so distracted by something I see outside, um, you will be inviting something that may not necessarily be that deity into your space. You don't want to do that. So if you don't have any knowledge on it too much, uh, I would say leave that alone. Um, also, with that being said, um, keep in mind that you should always start with your ancestors first. Definitely start with your ancestors first, you guys. Um, even if you don't know them, you can even write down on a piece of paper like my ancestors. And then you'll start seeing how you'll start getting uh, dreams and visions and things will start coming um, coming all into to one circle for you where it'll start making sense. And you'll be able to identify your ancestors and who should go on there. And who shouldn't, because I know there's a lot of people out there who don't know um, their, what is that? There is um, some people who, who actually don't have that 
connection or don't have any uh, real information on their ancestors you know like personal information they could be adopted or, or whatever the case may be so you can start off small with just my ancestors you know and then once you advance and you can start um using the ancestor money on the altar as well but start off small and, and don't um don't worry too much about if you're doing it wrong or you know anything like that i say when it comes to uh ancestors some people they like to put um some kind of spirit on there for them i personally um i just didn't feel right doing that putting that on mine you know cuz cuz of their history with spirits um some of them so i kind of stayed away from that but people do and that's cool but start um start small and work your way up definitely don't bypass your own ancestors just start working with deities and start conjuring and calling uh stuff into things energy into your um environment because all hell could break loose so yeah that's just a quick um video for tonight I'm so tired, so I'm going to call it a night. And again, that was just some quick information on starting your altars. Uh, never bypass your own ancestors to go straight for, you know, deities. I would not advise that. Um, also, as far as your ritual altars, you want to keep that separate from all the rest. Oh, again, like I said, as far as any of those altars, when you're lighting candles on it, I personally, I don't. Well, you never blow them out. You have to smudge them out. But um, if you have to, you know, for safety reasons, smudge it out, come home, you could, you know, turn it back on. That's cool. I personally, I just let mine go. But again, with my ulcers, I have different um, safety measures in place, you know, that hopefully <laughs> it would prevent a fire or something like that in case um, it cracked or something pushed it over I got animals you never know but um so just remember be safe about it because you don't want to start no fires or anything like that always go to your ancestors first get that set up and work with that and I'll tell you with my ancestors um they usually come to me when it's time for them to be uh added to my altar so and be patient be patient. And also another thing that I would advise, don't always keep going with once, once, once. I want this or I need this. Can you make this happen for me? Don't, I mean, sometimes it's just better to just say, thank you. I'm thinking about you. I love you. I miss you. And thank you. Like, I don't want anything. This offering is just to say, you know, I love you. And, and thank you for watching over me. You know, so don't always go with your hand out. You know, because one, one, one of them might slap your hand, okay? <laughs> It'll slap you right back. Like, get out of here. You're always asking for some shit, you know? <laughs> so be mindful of that, you guys, all right? So, y'all have a beautiful Saturday evening. Um, stay blessed. This is the Philly Bruja. I am signing off for tonight. Love you guys. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video if you would like. Um... So, yeah, so you guys, peace and blessings, or not, <laughs> and have a wonderful rest of your night and weekend, and um, whatever holiday I think is coming up, I can't remember, I don't really follow this shit, but um, yeah, y'all, stay, stay, stay cool, peace. <laughs>